What is going on everybody? Nick here and today we are predictably on the Bahama 41. Um, and I have had quite a few requests through my TikTok account actually to do a video walkthrough of this boat. And so that's what we're gonna be doing today. Um, I kind of want to show you all, you know, what options we have, what options we don't have, why we have the options we have, the general layout of this Bahama 41. So everyone can see that because you've seen it in some videos, social media posts, Instagram, TikTok. And so I think a lot of people would like that. And something that I do want to mention before we get started is that, you know, this boat, we custom built from the ground up for our needs. You know, we love to fish. We fish a lot. However, this boat definitely does more island hopping, booze cruising, sandbarring than fishing. And so we have it kind of set up a little bit more towards that. You know, so don't watch this video and say, oh, Bahama Boat Works, you know, that boat's only good for, you know, going to the sandbar with the family. Like, no. If you want it, Bahama will build you, you know, the bad, most badass fishing boat you can buy. But we like a mix of both. And so this boat is kind of, you know, laid out with a little bit of partying and also a little bit of fishing. And, you know, I, I personally don't think it hinders our fishing whatsoever. We still fish quite a bit and outfish quite a people quite a bit. But I want to make that known before some keyboard warriors get on there and start shit talking the Bahama. Um, and another thing I want to say, I've said it every video, but as I get the channel started, you know, please like and subscribe if you like boating content. I'm really trying to push some stuff out. As I said in the last video, I have a lot of stuff in the work. Um, I did mention that I was filming a, a wakeboarding video off this boat this weekend. Those plans had to get pushed back due to bad weather for one. And then also the individual who I have wakeboarding, he's also a singer. And so he had a gig he had to go to. Um, but that's still coming. I have some more stuff in the pipeline. Again, if you like boating content, you know, it'd be a big help if y'all would like and subscribe. And yeah, so without further ado, I'm gonna start at the bow and work my way back and we'll get into the walkthrough of the boat. So the first place we're gonna start is up here in the bow. You know, it's pretty standard up here. Navigation light up front, two pop-up cleats, so we can tie up nicely wherever we go. And then one thing that we do have unique is in our anchor locker, which does need to be cleaned actually, is we have all of our line storage in here on both sides. And that makes it real nice. And what this placemat, why I actually have that, is so when we're deploying the anchor, we can do that and it protects the side of the boat. And something to note too, is you know, a lot of people would say, it's a big 41 foot boat. Why don't you have a windlass? Um, we don't really need it. Um, we always have a bunch of people on the boat who can very easily manually do the anchor. And in our opinion, it's just another water intrusion point that we didn't want. And I like the clean look of the boat without a better. So next forward, we have our fresh water fill right here. And then we have two fish boxes on either side. This one right now, we just have to use it for storage because we have a lot of stuff we keep on the boat. Here we have our side, our skirts, so we can kind of enclose the console a little bit. And then under it, we actually have these big shades that extend out from the top of the T-top to these poles that we can put in the rod holds out here. So it puts a big shade over all of this. On this side, we have another fish box. It's kind of dirty right now, but you can see we have a dry mat in there that when we're actually fishing, we take it out. And we also have chill plates on both sides so we don't have to have ice. And something to note about those chill plates, which make it really nice is, you know, they get, they'll freeze this entire thing as one big block of ice. And so it really gets rid of our use to have to buy hundreds of pounds of ice every time we fish. What I do is once we get out the inlet in the clean salt water, I fill it up maybe a quarter of the way and I have the chill plates on cold already. And so that's gonna freeze that salt water, but since the boat's moving around, the water's sloshing, it doesn't freeze in one piece. It kind of turns into a salt water slushy, which is nice, because that's cold at the 32 degrees, uh, which is fresh water freezing point. And then also it kills the fish and gets a cold real fast, because that fish is completely encapsulated with um, cold ice. So I think it's a much better solution than having to buy ice every time you fish. And so something to note here, on both sides, we have these two holes. And what there is, we have backrests that go there. And then in these slides, these are big cushions. So these turn into huge, huge seats on both sides. You know, four or five people can fit easily on each one. Or with the backrests, you know, people can be laying out, sun tanning, whatever you want to do. It's a great situation. And so the next is this huge in-deck fish box. And so right now, we just have it for use for four fenders and our life raft. We don't have it set up as a fish box because like I said, we don't do, you know, a whole lot of tournament fishing. So what we have instead is we put access to our bow thruster in there. And we also 
open the sides here so we can get to the drains for our fish box. So instead of having to have a drain plug, you can see we have a little inline seacock. And so having that inline seacock makes it really nice. If I want to, you know, not let water drain, I just come down here, you know, close that off. I don't have to worry about drain plugs, I'm putting my hand in freezing cold water to take a drain plug out. I can just do that. It makes it real nice and easy. And as I mentioned also, we don't have this set up as a fish box because we're not a hardcore fishing operation. But if you do, you know, Bahama will happily build this as a fish box. They can put a freezer place in there. Um, and it is cavernous. You could fit multiple hundred pound tuna, quite a bit actually. Um, and so there's that, you know, we have it in storage. It fits quite a bit. So let's move on to the next half. And so moving back behind that, we have another thing, another compartment where I just have all my cleaning supplies in there. You can see I have it all labeled, what I have in there. Nothing fancy about that. And I'm sure you noticed that on the cleaning box, it says ceramic soap and ceramic wax. That is because this boat is ceramic coated, uh, but I'm gonna make an entire video going into that on its own. So be waiting for that because that, that topic is highly debated. It's something I think is worth it, but I'm gonna go into, into it on a deeper scale because it's very expensive and it actually does require quite a bit of maintenance as well. It doesn't get rid of the waxing process. So had to mention that. Let's keep moving backwards. So next here, under here, we just have a cooler. And I do want to mention too, that we have it set up as a seat here, but what Bahama also does offer is you can get a big, you know, chill sun pad here instead of one little seat. And it gets rid of this compartment here. However, it turns into a huge coffin box basically. So you gain all that space. And then also in the console, you gain a lot of storage space forward that takes up where this usually would be. And so, Moving back more, pretty standard, you know, our console, and we'll go into the console once we get through the deck. Windshield here, this is easy to see why. I can't recommend it enough. So much better than Isinglass. Name of the boat, Caroline. And I walk around to the other side here, and you can see that we have a hatch here to get up onto the T-top. If you were to put a tower or a second station, we do not have that. So moving back more, a fuel fill fuel fill here same thing on the other side and it's two saddle tanks so two fuel fills and we'll move here real quick we have the front of the helm the electronic suite and so what we do is up top we set it up so we have one i think it's a 12 inch garmin that we run all of our engine data to and you can see here we have it set up to give us all information i like this screen because it's my running screen two vhf radios i like having the full control where i can mess with squelch and all of that you know big open spot here with a lip it's out of the wind you can put hats clothes whatever it's got a lip so phones don't slide and then down below we have our main gps and it's a big 24 inch screen and so i can split it however many ways i want um, if i were to build another boat i would not do this again i'd have two smaller screens i think having two screens is better but i am in the future going to make an entire video on things that i would do differently so it's not worth mentioning in this video here we have our optimus um 360 controller this is for the joystick we have our on and off button usb ports on this side we have our humphrey interceptor system which is like a fancy trim tab more usb charging ports motor start and stop and on both sides we have all of our breakers they are backlit with indicator lights if something is turned on you can see and so moving down helm we have our throttles. You can see I have it in one level right right now. This is a remote to the Garmin's. Here we have our bow thruster control. Here we have our spotlight control. Here we have our joystick. And then here we have our remote for our sound system. And one thing that you probably notice is, you know, we don't have any keys down here. We don't have, you know, the Garmin autopilot screen down here. And the reason for that is because we like a very, very, very minimalistic look. You know, in fact, when we built it, we didn't have the joystick so we didn't have the joystick or the optimus screen we didn't have the humphrey interceptor system um, because i like it as clean as possible all of our key switches and other control units are hidden below um, in the console and everything all electronics are just routed through the two garment screens um, which some people don't like because they want you know repetitiveness i personally don't mind it because i still have those screens down below and i think it's a much cleaner layout i don't like keys everywhere seeing screws mounting points all that stuff, engine gauges especially. You know, I just didn't want any of that. I wanted to clean. So that's why we have it how we have it. Nice, clean, simple, which 
you'll see is a theme throughout the boat which this boat has a badass sound system on it but if you look you won't see a single speaker we have them all hidden in custom speaker boxes up under the console i mean up, not the console up under the gunnels and they're angled down so they reflect off you know the deck of the boat and it bangs and bumps and has some hearty bass and i've ne yet to be out done the sandbar i'll put it that way um so let's keep going let's go over this helm seat real quick so here we have the helm seat under here we keep storage i have dry deck with a bunch of stuff down there our seats we have storage under both and we just have it set up as a basic bench seat but if you want you know behind more build your release chairs here teak armrest teak backrest whatever you want we have four cup holes in the back five rod holes running across the back and then here we have an aft facing seat which we have, we have the seat because like i said we do a lot of cruising but if you're predominantly fishing they can do just a big tackle station here whatever you want bahamas custom they will build you whatever you want but we still have plenty of room for tackle we have tackle storage here tackle storage here down on this side we have tackle storage here and then we have the same thing on the other side tackle storage here and then moving back here this is a big cooler fish box whatever we want to use it for and as you can see we do have the refrigeration plate in here so again we don't need any ice and then moving back one more we have another compartment we do not have a sea keeper on this boat but if you did have a sea keeper this is where we go you would lose the storage so i'll open it up and what we have in here is a toolkit and then more of our fishing supplies because as i said we still do fish a lot even though we're mostly cruise you know i have it all nicely labeled in these um rubber made boxes you know this one has all of our lures taglines leaders outriggers whereas this one has fighting belts billy bat um, rod leashes fishing towels all that good stuff and so something i do want to mention um you know i mentioned we don't you know the boat set it mostly for cruising but as you can see we still have plenty of fishing storage you know we keep most of our lure collection on the boat almost all of our terminal tackle um all that good stuff not all our fighting belts um everything we need just for a fun day of fishing is kept on the boat so it minimizes the work i have to do the day before um, we do have an entire warehouse that's full of you know this random fishing stuff that if you're fishing a tournament or doing something more specialized like high speed trolling or you know tuna fishing whatever i go and i you know get stuff out of the warehouse but for you know general fishing trips out for sailfish dolphin blackfin whatever everything we need is on the boat so it is still extremely fishable and so moving back from this here we have a mount if you wanted to put a rocket launcher or a table and then the last compartment here is the bilge actually and it's pretty full right now because i have stuff in here because the way bahama does their bilges let me move this stuff back roll this back it's under here they put their bilge real down low and then cover it with these plexiglass um covers that you can open up when you get to it so what we did is we took it we put dry deck on top of it and we use it for more storage we have a custom-made dive ladder so that's what this is for and then here we have our stern anchor anchor you know bait tray and then also these are for our fenders and then let me see if i can get way back there you can see this is where we keep two spare props as well as the holding tank that's a pump right there and yeah it's pretty simple and now moving back we have this huge transom seat that you know spans the entire beam of the boat which is 11 feet and so you know take off six inches on, on each side there's a 10 foot long sofa you can see i can sit here and lounge and i don't even take up half of it this is hands down in my opinion i've been on a lot of boats the best seating of any center console out there this is a phenomenal design by bahama and birdsong marine props to you here we have a door you know a lid with a door on the other side if you wanted to didn't have this backrest on which it comes off with these screws um you could use that door but to be honest it's pretty useless when we have no space back here because we have quads but because of that we do have a dive door which again is a very good design by bahama pull she opens up in one thing there's no lid to move nothing and it's almost right at the water so it's a perfect height and this thing is beefy i can sit on this absolutely no problem at all and it ain't going anywhere and so on the transom nothing fancy here 
four motors. Then the things that you can't see on the transom there, underwater lighting. We do have Lumitech lighting, you know, RGBW, so you can see, you know, every color in the spectrum, customize it, rainbow, whatever you want. And we have two of those lights facing backwards and then two facing down. It's not the most over the top lighting setup in the world, but I've never had a problem with it. I've never felt inadequate. It does its job perfectly and I love it. So as I mentioned earlier, you know, you see no speakers anywhere, nothing you don't have to see. But if you look here under the gunnels, you'll see where all the speakers are. You know, you have a 10 inch there, 10 inch there, or eight, eight, I think. Here, a 12 inch sub with a big tube. The speakers are on custom made boxes and the exact same thing on that side. You can see the subwoofer right there. We have LED RGBW lights. And that light strip you see, that is RGBW. So I have a remote, I can control whatever color it is, make a pattern between colors. For the 4th of July, I can make it America themed um, and all that good stuff. And I will mention too, up here, we have floodlights. We have one facing forward as well as two facing back. And those floodlights are just white and blue, no other colors. But we do have here, we have flood LED strip bar lights that come down by Lumitech. And those are LED color changing. I can make them whatever I want. Um, and I think the last thing I have to show y'all is down in the console where, where all the electronics are. And I will say that is very dirty right now. I'm um, not dirty, cluttered, should I say. I have all the covers for all the, the soft goods down there just thrown. Um, and I have a bunch of stuff laying after that because last night my friends and I did a booze cruise on the boat. And so there's a whole lot of stuff left over from that. So disregard the mess down there, but I'll still show you the general setup and that wiring that people, you know, love about Bahamas so much. So here's the door setup, nice, big and heavy duty. They make it nice where the door rolls over the top here. So you're not having to squeeze into, you know, a thing this big, you can nicely step down. So let's turn the light on down here. Actually, while we're on it, I'm also gonna turn all the LEDs under there for storage boxes. And so you can see in here, we have a nice step. And this brings us down to the panel where most of the hidden electronics are. Again, ignore the mess down here. I need to clean that. But you can see down here, we have all of our ignition gauges, our fob for the motors, our Garmin autopilot unit, our mercury head unit for the motors, which is actually off right now, should probably be on. Um, our battery chargers, battery whatever. More breakers for stuff I don't need breakers for up there. You know, we have the head, the stereo, the VHF, electronics, da da da. We have six six um battery switches and this is for the six main house batteries we do have nine total batteries on the boat but this is the sixth one as you can see they're labeled nicely lights and pump starboard engine starboard center port center port engine and then more electronics here this is for our refrigeration if you're running it offshore power come here and you flip that and then turn on the water pump for cooling and then this is for the aft drink box the forward drink box and the forward fish box if we're not on shore power, flip it, inverter, turn the inverter breaker on, and you can control everything there. And this all closes back here. To where we have a big mirror here, storage, more USB charging down here. And then this USB actually goes into the sound system so you can play it not through Bluetooth if you really want. And here, here's my business cards if any of you all want to do some business. Um, you can see these are the covers I was talking about. We have teak sole for niceness. We have a marine head with holding tank and overboard discharge. You know, should you be in an emergency and need that. Back here behind this grate, we have the uh, compressor for the refrigeration system. Uh, this is my box where I keep all the legal paperwork. Um, usually it's hidden, but it's here right now because I was in there the other day when I was filling up. Hall number, throwables, in here in the step you get to your your y valve and your water pump for the head you switch that and it'll switch from overboard to the holding tank and so then if you look back here which is another reason behind people like bahama so much you have cavernous storage and all of the electronics are mounted up into the ceiling here we have all of our amps for the sound system we have the main head unit for the sound system. There is the inverter for the refrigeration, the Garmin unit. Back there we have chargers on both sides. There's one back there. All of our life jackets are here, our ditch bag, our first aid kit, our polarity thingy. Um, let me get up here. 
And we also have rod storage here for, I think, oh, I believe this holds 12 rods here, which is really impressive, actually. So you can see that the, you know, the inside the console there, it's laid out very well. The wiring is very neat. You know, everything that you don't need to see all the time, it's hidden. Where everything you do need, it's right there at arm's reach. It's a very well thought out boat. Um, it's, it's, you know, it's a great boat. Um, you know, Bahama builds an insane boat. We came from a yellowfin. Uh, I don't hate yellowfins, I do like them actually, but I think it qualifies me to kind of compare the two. And I'm taking this bad boy all day long. It is an absolute beast offshore. Um, I will say the yellowfin is gonna absorb the small vibrations of a tight chop much more. That balsa cord hole on the yellowfin, that's hard to beat for absorbing vibration. However, when it gets nasty, you know, you're out there and you know, four or five and six foot waves, I'm taking the Bahama all day long. You know, we chose it for a reason. I personally feel that it's a better build boat than the Elephant. Again, just my opinion. Other people have different experiences. And, you know, this boat is everything we could ever want. We're really happy with it. And, you know, that's pretty much it. So, you know, I hope this walkthrough covered everything. You know, if there's something else that anyone wants to see, you know, put it in the comments and I will try to make a video to give y'all what you want to see, you know. If somebody, oh, there are dolphins right behind me. Um, if somebody wants to see a video on the pipe work, the ceramic coating, the sound system, the electronics, let me know and I will make a video on it. You know, I'm, I'm here to give you all the content that you want to see. And so, as I said at the beginning of the video, like and subscribe. It's a big help as I get the channel started. And that's about all that I have. So, you know, I won't hold you all any longer. Y'all have a good rest of your day and I'll see you in the next video.